Welcome to Be Simply. This is Suzanne Toro, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Today, we have special guest Martina Hoffman, and we are going to dive into her artwork. She is a master artist, a visionary, an alchemist of multi dimensional fields, translating those transmissions onto canvas with such exquisite beauty. If you're listening, look below. There's a link so you can see what we're talking about. Otherwise, sit back, enjoy. Let's dive in with Martina. So, hello, Martina. I want to thank you for being here today. So excited to just dive into your art. I feel like um, today there's so much wisdom that's going to come out of, one, the paintings that you're going to share. Uh, And also, I feel... I was tuning in a little earlier that, uh, you know, there's a lot of grasping for wisdom that you've experienced in your life right now through the younger generations. So Mm -hmm. I'm excited for us to touch on that a little bit, um, meaning from art to even uh, honoring the plant medicines and uh, wanting to have certain skills prematurely. that you maybe can relate to even in art and metaphysically. (laughs) So, um, yeah, there's a big calling. So thank you for being here. Uh, Why don't we just dive in since we were just talking about uh, your painting behind you, maybe you could share a little bit uh, about this beautiful goddess and uh, what this current project, is it current or it's complete? Yeah, it's a current, it's a current piece. Well, first of all, Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. And I think it's been two years since we we had this yeah. we had a conversation, a yep. public conversation. So yeah, always a pleasure. It's great. And uh, so yes, what you see behind me is um, it's my um, my current work, and it's uh, the piece I'm working on. It's not finished. So it's work in progress, but I thought I'd show it because it's something that I really felt called to do. Some of my paintings, um, the the previous one was somewhat intense and dealt more with the, the current situation of moving out of um, the shadow or not escaping it necessarily for um, for escapist reasons, but just to move towards the light and, and move towards a more positive um, outlook in life because it's been such a challenging time for most of us Absolutely. and well, for all of us I would say I mean I don't I hardly know anybody who hasn't been really affected by this whole um, worldwide scenario and uh, so I felt called to to paint something that was extremely positive very goddessy mm-hmm. um, I dealt with renewal so I I came up with this spring concept and kind of you know it reminded now that I see it it reminds me a little bit of Botticelli's um mm. birth of Venus and yeah and uh, I used a very good friend of mine as a model and uh, she's been a model throughout the years I love her I love painting her hair and uh, mm. and and her beautiful face and uh, so this is just um a piece that um it deals with hope you know, I felt like creating something that gives hope and and awareness of of the the infinite renewal that is really ours. There's no there's no end to anything, and there is such a beautiful thing as a as a renewal element in nature. And I really wanted to point to that, and that's what the painting is all about. Oh, you see a lot of bees here that pollinate, and and her crown and the little DNA spiral that. Um, symbolizes that uh, that potential in all of us potential in all of us yeah it's there beautiful and so you touched on so many beautiful concepts just in one painting so that's what I love about your work Uh, as we've Mm -hmm. called it before there's so many little portals in there you've described it that we can access beyond just what we first see Um, and definitely that painting was speaking to me (laughs) last night as I described Um, if you can share a little bit, I feel like many of us are being guided to the renewal, to the rebirth, uh, as you said, not to evade darkness, but really we're coming to the end of that kulpa, the Kali Yuga. And finally, I, I think we're getting the sense for those that uh, exercise those senses that it's time to put those books away 
and uh, focus on the rebirth. Uh, if you can share a little bit in uh, from your journey and your wisdom that you keep inside of you, uh, what you've seen about the potential of rebirth um, and how we can really uh, let go of those things that brought us to the point of the rebirth versus holding on to them like treasure trove that we have to carry into new environments. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess just letting go of, of the past and everything that is heavy and burdensome. That's the, that's, that's been my daily yoga for a long time. And I guess everybody's, and it's not, it's not an easy, an easy task to, to just, um, let it wash away when when it's when it's outdated and when when the lesson has been learned but you know we do i mean i have a tendency to hold on and you know and and so i'm i'm trying to um you know during this time after two years of of a somewhat secluded lifestyle i'm trying to come back into the world and really uh, see all the good things in in the small aspects of life, and that's 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 what the journey with um, COVID and uh, and the restrictions has really brought to me. That's been a great gift to to really look, observe my life, and look at everything in a in a more um, dissecting way, where I let go of a lot of aspects of my daily activities that were just uh, more of a burden than they were um, helpful. So I became more simple in my ways. Yeah. And I, I made an extra effort to, to see what is right in front of me and to be uh, really um, pleased and grateful with the many gifts we have every day in our lives. And when we get so busy every day, it's easy to be looking for bigger, better, sparklier events and activities. And, yeah. and really the true joy for me personally lies in being simple and mm -hmm. you know, making that time, going to the beach and doing that Qigong in the morning and doing the breathing right, right in front of this amazing ocean that is there and just yeah. uh, taking this, this beautiful support system that is really present. Absolutely. Aho. And that's, um, if you can speak, I noticed your post on Instagram this morning. Uh, I couldn't grab the <laughs> photo, but I'll put it in here uh, of, you yes. know, the breath, like, reminding people of the breath. Um, yes. If you can share a little bit more about your relationship to yoga, um, because in these quote unquote modern times, a lot of people uh, I m mainly focus on the asana. And we're going to get a little bit into the grasping from the younger generations because they, mm -hmm. they tend to like grasp really quickly. They want to know and then they discard or they just focus on an aspect of it. But you're touching on a really powerful aspect because the system of yoga like kind of works on you. And then it eventually it leads you to this place of simplicity, not because it's telling you you have to be simplistic. That's my perspective. It's just welcome you. And nature does the same thing. She's taught me many times, subtract, subtract, subtract. <laughs> so if you can yes. share your perspective with that, and even the Qigong, like working with the energy mm -hmm. of the body, the earth, the breath. Yeah. Well, I had, I had the incredible um, uh, luck to be initiated into yoga by a, a wond wonderful woman who was... Um, who was a um, master of Iyengar yoga. And um, what, what I learned from her is that it's not so much about how quickly and how far and how fast you get to, to mastering a position, but it's more about your being present with that position and how everything becomes sort of effortless when you let go and how you fall into that forward bend that gave you that aching feeling in the back. And while you, when you let go, you realize you can just become super pliable. And, uh, and so this is, this is what I've been carrying in with me throughout the years is that it's, it's all about holding a position and giving yourself to that process and just really feeling it. And uh, so when I do yoga, I prefer to um, stay away from 
doing too much aerobic yoga where it's all about you know the the up and down and over and you know doing all this and and i think i think one of the one of the things that has been happening for so many of us is that we want to be so we want to become these superhumans so we want to do extreme sports and endurance and well well it's really I guess it's also my years, you know, I'm not 25. So, but besides that, I mean, I can do so these things, but I've learned how to really appreciate and enjoy the, the, the essence of things more than the um, going after a goal, a better, faster. Yeah. So. This is how this is how I see it, and Qigong is certainly a beautiful way to just uh, you know bring build the core energy and and um, and do the calming and the energetic at the same time, and that's absolutely my, yeah finding balance. I guess it's always what I'm looking for. Absolutely, aren't we all? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I would say the number one requested. I ask people how they want to feel. Number one is calm. Like they don't say happy, they say calm. They that's the yes. number of response that people want to be, which nature provides yeah. for us. Um, now, when you with the painting about the goddess and Venus and love, um, if you share a little bit more about the Yin principle, because it's interesting. Right at the end of this, like culpa, people are like they're like, okay, let's be superhumans. It's like the last expression of the Yang energy. Um, if you can share from your cosmic interface to your earth interface, uh, what the yin uh, represents to you, even through the practice of Qigong and yoga, um, yeah. and how we can follow her wisdom in a way that's uh, mm -hmm. in a space and a rhythm that is more true to uh, what's around us, the ecosystem around us. Yeah, I guess there's a there's definitely like uh, in the the yin energy for me is definitely well it's the receptive energy and uh, there's an element of surrender but it's not it's not a a surrender where you um, where you hand your your powers over to anybody it's a it's a deep surrender that allows more more communication and that allows a fuller perspective and a fuller experience so uh, you know I guess that that goes to for this, this beautiful journey that we've done as women throughout so many decades now where we've become, where we've learned to be uh, more independent and respected and equal, but not in a, in a sense that makes us other than what we are, you know, it's not, right. it's, it, so we've come around to being less, uh, De denaturalized. I mean, there was a time when we wanted to be the career woman and we wanted to do it all. And I see a lot of women, younger women, especially who embrace being mothers and who want to do that and and really have the full experience and um, and to also feel the power of this experience instead of feeling that they're doing a minor job that is not being respected in society. So yeah absolutely it's one of the yeah. biggest and jobs you do those, yeah and then there's those also amongst us who who have this um who do embrace our calling and who feel less of a need to be right. actually um physical mothers yep. while still be a nurturing and full blown woman female expression yeah absolutely. so that's it's been a great progress in all of those um in all yeah. of those Allowing aspects for all all expressions yeah in, in with the yin energy and being an art uh, i would a master artist uh i will give you that title <laughs> uh, yeah. a master artist <laughs> yeah <laughs> you've, you've earned it through many lifetimes uh mm -hmm. if you can share a little bit more about working with that creation energy um when you talk about reception and receiving um, and the patience sometimes that's uh, needed, if you can share about that, and then moving it into actual fluid action, that yang energy. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, I, um, I've, I've said, I've shared this many times publicly that I, I, I'm part of a, I let a process happen in my creative work where I become, where I'm more of a receptor 
uh, a receiving vessel of an energy that wants to come through. So there's less of a mental um, a construction process that um, comes before I go to the canvas. So I don't plan, I, I have a general feeling idea. I might start more with an abstract background where I just uh, flow the paint out and I, I, uh, I feel into the colors that, that I would like to be using in that moment. But then once I start painting and using my technique, um, I just dedicate myself to this uh, communication between um, maybe my higher self or maybe a higher element that is mm -hmm. way beyond my higher self that is bigger than even that and uh, and where it becomes a um, yeah it becomes a um, a mutual process of of collaboration and uh, my ego uh, stays out of the way as much as it can <laughs> <laughs> in my well, in the body and it's a really beautiful dance it is kind of like a, it is in many ways like a meditation where you you observe what's coming and you you invite in what feels right and what is in harmony with your own system in in any given moment and then I get nourished in the process because I receive what I need but I also know that I'm a medium for what is happening and needing needed around me and so there's always it's it's there's a there's a mediumistic element in in the way i work where yeah the right the right message will certainly come because i'm being asked to help provide this image as a guideline as a as a help for those who come and see my work maybe something like that yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, and then just touch a little bit more. We're going to dive into a painting that's calling me right now. Uh, a little bit about the aspect of humility and how valuable that you found that in your life um, and in your work. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when you when you paint a, a painting, um, it is it is always a humiliating process. You know, you have to. To, because every painting is different and and what i found is that that with each piece i'm i'm always discovering something new there's always something that i haven't that i haven't done before and that i'm that is new so i'm i'm learning a new skill so there's there's always that and um there's a lot of um uh, a lot of patience that plays into the into the creative process as well. And uh, Robert used to say that no um, no masterpiece was ever painted by a lazy artist. So that's <laughs> that's right there in the nutshell. So so when when students would would come and have these high expectations of that what they're going to mm. do, what they were going to learn and and be able to accomplish after five or six days or ten days in a workshop you know i would try to remind them that all these amazing masters throughout the ages all of them male and female artists they they studied and they they did the homework and they gave themselves decades of developing skill um personal expression and uh, and that's how it's been for me. So it's just always such an incredible, um, hum humbling experience yeah. to see how my work is um, is still not what what I would like it to be. You know, if I could paint what I really yeah. what I would really feel, then it would be still different. But Absolutely. I'm making progress. Yeah, I mean, you are. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning every day, and it's a great. It's a great journey. Oh, yeah. Your words remind me of being in design and architecture school. We had a teacher that would make us do like all these renditions, and we'd be like, "He's like, here's your assignment. It's due Thursday. It was Tuesday." And he's like, "You have to have 500 versions." But oh it, my god, it did that because you you couldn't get attached. And then yes, um, the other humbling part is it never comes out like how you want you know you just don't have the skills yes no, it, it never does it never does it there's always that surprise element yeah in it and it's also that's where this this whole aspect of letting go it 
yeah. comes, comes in handy. It's, and it's, and really, I mean, cre being really creative should always leave a lot of space for letting go and allowing something in that you had not really planned for. Yeah, that's um, the, great the, flexi the being the, flexible, you know. Yeah, those are the gems. Um, yeah. So this was talking to me this morning, and it kind of goes. Okay. Let me see if I can get it up here. Oh goodness, bear with me. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. I wonder why. Hmm. Well, okay, it doesn't want to go up there. What does it look like? What it's what's the mushroom. The... Oh yes, my little mushroom painting. Yeah, a drawing. Yeah. It's a drawing. It's oh, work it on. Yeah, yeah, it's work on paper, and I've really gotten uh, to enjoy these um, throughout the COVID season. I've really enjoyed my um, my pencil work. And this mm. is one of those pieces. And I, I like to work on dark paper, black paper. And um, it's just really, it's like a doodle, if you want. I mean, it's just like something that, that. It's a fancy to doodle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then I get into it and I really sort of like bring it out and I, you know, get into the technique yeah. and the highlights that I always, you know, so, so enjoy um, bringing yeah. in. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really, I just really felt to, I uh, felt like um, uh, creating a beautiful little uh, piece about the, the mushroom realm and the, 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 the connections that the my, mycelium creates so, so magically and yeah. how, how it is. so it's, it's, it's about that. And, and I was really, um, there was no, yeah, there was no, thought or message behind it it's but it felt while I was doing it it felt like something that would belong in in a Alice in Wonderland book you know yeah absolutely so, and sure, because right now someone told me recently that the end of at, during World War II mushrooms became very popular people were putting them in beer they were putting them in bread well, they were actually having scientists yeah. in Germany trying to remove them because they didn't want people taking the psilocybin. Um, uh -huh. And then right now through this, you know, I call it the brouhaha on planet earth with COVID, <laughs> yes. mushrooms have become very popular, like microdosing, all of these things. It's like the yeah. consciousness isn't comfortable. So it wants something else. Um, mm -hmm. If you can share a little bit more about uh, just, it doesn't even have to be psilocybin, but just your relationship with the plant realm and yeah. uh, how to, honor respect and engage with it in a way that it can assist but not like take you on a lost journey <laughs> yes yes well I, I i think that that the plant medicines are wonderful wonderful uh, teachers and an, an amazing support system but i've always been one to um uh to um to prefer the idea of um, doing any kind of um, psilocybin or psychoactive substance with with really great preparation, mm -hmm. um, with um, uh, with um, in a grounded way, mm -hmm. um, possibly with with somebody who can watch over you or will at least you know pay attention to you. It doesn't have to be somebody who. Who breathes down your neck, but uh, somebody who might just be there to 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 support you when you if you do hit some some glitches and edgy moments. But but the idea of doing microdosing can be a very helpful, I believe, uh, way to um, uh, to navigate. But I don't believe in anything that um, for me. Yeah. Anybody else. It, every, it's a free country, but I believe that the moment we we feel that we need anything on a daily basis at that time of day to get us going or to bring us up or to bring us down yeah. or to get us over the hump, it becomes a habit and anything habit forming can turn into something else. And um, not to be talking down on this amazing movement that has given us a lot more freedom. Uh, especially in the United States around this, the substance like marijuana and uh, mushrooms and uh, and the, the incredible work that can be done for trauma, I still feel that 
the better we can handle our system being really clean and pure and healthy, the the better it is in the end for us. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely an advocate. This is where I've come to, that my life has become simpler, cleaner, and I, you know, I, I paint my paintings with the good cup of um, <laughs> herbal tea. Nice. And I don't, I mean, I have, I have even lost the, the habit of, of enjoying a glass of wine or a glass of beer. And I have nothing against it. It's just that something, this is not part of my, my need anymore. I, they, I don't need anything. I, just I just need good clean food and and uh, and uh, my work and my good partnership. Yeah. I think it's really important to be in good partnership with people. And when those things are in place, um, I feel like I don't need anything else, and and everything just rolls. And but I'm still deeply grateful for the amazing openings and lessons and advantages and and propulsion that the um, the medicine the plant medicine has given me especially in my earlier years and throughout life and psilocybin is certainly a very precious and ancient medicine and i deeply honor it it was always one of my favorites because it's so it's so natural you know and you can feel it you feel so connected to the earth yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so you're you're describing that combination of uh ceremony versus uh you know i guess recreation you know i've explained yeah. that even to yeah. my grown they're somewhat grown children that you know it's really about a ceremony it's not about you know an adventure yeah. uh so sometimes those can be good memories but in the the respect uh yeah it takes a while to unpack plant medicine ceremonies <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. It could take, yeah. I tell people, it could take decades to like understand what the heck, you know, and where it means. So if you're doing a lot of them, that's going to get complicated. But yeah. yeah, and there's, there's a lot to, there's a lot of, a, a lot to be integrated and, and, and assimilated and, and understood about these, these experiences we have. And I, and I think the more time we allow ourselves to, to to absorb properly it's like eating food too quickly it yeah. never goes down well and then you have then you have you have it sitting sideways and you get gassy and stomach cramps you know it's like yeah, yeah hiccups yeah. Mm. absolutely yeah well, <laughs> all right so uh here let's see if i can get this one up uh <laughs> that one's jumping oh, up yeah the, the yeah line, uh as we talk about uh, ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, share. This is how big is this painting? This painting is about, um, let's see, uh, I would say in inches, in, in meters, in, in centimeters, it's a meter by uh, a meter by 50. Okay. About that. So that makes it um, 30. Yeah, I think 30 five by yeah 20 yeah 15 yeah anyway so this is this piece is called um because i'm all thinking in centimeters these days it's <laughs> it's interesting how the brain goes you know i can hardly figure out fahrenheit anymore since i'm always thinking in centigrade yeah. but this piece is called um leaving shadow land was mm -hmm. the the original title and um uh, leaving shadow is basically the the um, the whole theme of this painting. I actually laid this out many many years ago. The canvas was laid out while Robert was still around, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I had this this piece sitting there, and I hadn't touched it. And so um, about last year, I began painting on it, and uh, and I realized that I was kind of feeling into. Um, one of my favorite themes, which is the the Phoenix theme. I'm a double Scorpio, and so there's a lot of that in my in my you know it's always about death and rebirth, and yeah. you know just reinventing or re dying to the old self and coming back to the renewal. And so this is this is the piece that I painted while we were coming out of this this prison 
that mm. this imposed person. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, um, yeah, and there's a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, there's the DNA spiral is in there. You see, yeah. it's always about the renewal is always the, the, the infinity symbol is always there. And, uh, and it's just uh, um, this movement that I felt was happening inside of me while I was uh, trying to liberate myself from this. I was trying to make sense of everything that was going on and trying to let go of the, the yeah, the, the concerns. Um, yeah. They were definitely moments of, of discomfort and not crazy fear, but, you know, people got sick and around us. And so I wanted to, um, I guess this was my way of pushing through and coming out and coming back into the light and leaving that grip, that grip of restriction and control that I was feeling and that didn't really sit well with me. Yeah. <laughs> For many of us, no. Well, and yeah. so the intricacies of it. So, uh, is it all? Because it's it feels like there's like the glimmery parts, the light parts, uh, feel iridescent in nature. Is yes. that all paint or? It's all paint. Yeah. This is this is part of my this is part of my my um my tool set my technique tool set where I'm I'm painting in a technique that is based on the the old the old masters technique that the Van Eyck brothers um, put together. And it's basically, you you start from a, a darker background and you okay. you paint you paint with light, you paint the, the light, the, the highlights and yeah. and and it, you, you, you create somewhat of a monochromatic piece. And eventually you you apply very translucent glazes and mm. and come back with the light. And that gives these incredible translucent forms and and colors and it's very it's there's a lot of uh yeah and you see it in that little in that little um sphere that the phoenix is holding yeah and all, all over it's beautiful yeah so that's uh that's it's it's just that's just technique it's just you know <laughs> yeah I, well that's not it's, great. A, <laughs> it's a it's, it's a, a thing it's a thing, <laughs> a thing to learn um, yeah, yeah, beautiful. And if you can share a little bit more, you know, from we've touched on a little bit from control, like in, you know, for an artist, and then also, um, I would say, yeah, for most of humanity, they were gripped one way or the other, I always say, no matter how you were meeting it, it was potentially fear of something being yeah. uh, taken away. And then everyone responded in different ways, uh, or many, mm -hmm. maybe many ways. <laughs> so, um, can you share a little bit of how you have let go of control, uh, inhibiting you on the canvas and then in life in general? Hmm. How have I done that? Well, I guess it's, uh, it's, uh, it definitely felt overwhelming at times. I mean, just thinking about the situation that we've come out of. And, uh, and I guess that uh, one of the things that really helped me to, to escape this, this feeling of, I felt literally imprisoned at times, imprisoned by, um, by the early restrictions of 21, because they were quite severe here where we are. And, uh, and then later on, I felt imprisoned by, by this constant flow of information and, uh, and this, um, yeah, this, uh, well, the situation itself, because there's definitely, there, there was definitely that, that element. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't just deny and say, this thing didn't exist because right. it truly did. And yeah. so, so it was kind of like fighting against these, these windmills, these, these, these weird, almost invisible giants that were in place and kind of grabbing us in ways that we, we were not used to. Yeah. And uh, it really made me appreciate um, earlier generations. I've listened a lot to my, my family, my mom, my dad, my my grandparents. I mean, I grew up with these stories of of that that dreadful war that that everybody had to endure in Europe, and that you know had such horrible effects on 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 the whole world and yeah. and um, 
and humanity. So, so it kind of made me realize that there's always, even even in our generation, we didn't see that one coming, and uh, and here we were, you know. And it was this, um, yeah, this. So, so what what really helped me through it was was creating, really being at the canvas and and diving into into my creative process and just trusting that that there was more, you know, I literally had to at some times build my, my hope back up and my, my faith that things would change. Cause you know, sometimes when you're locked up like that and the world seems so dark, I mean, I, I, I can easily forget that this is, I'm, I'm kind of like a Maasai. This is my, I hear that the Maasai, they, they live so much in the moment that if you if you put them if you lock them up in jail i don't know where that where i have that information from but but i read it somewhere or maybe saw it somewhere but but um when you tell these people that they're going to be in jail or you put them away they they can die because they don't know that in two days or in two months or there's an end to this so right. this is how i felt at times so i had to I had to build something and connect with something that gave me that hope, you know, and that um, that trust that everything was going to be okay in 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 a way, uh, not knowing how it was going to be okay, and we don't we don't know yeah. what is going to happen. We still don't, but you know, I feel I feel that yeah, creating and using these tools, these resources of of knowing that reality is something that we create every day with every thought, every action, every emotion, and and our reality is ours to rebuild every day. And that's really something that that is such an amazing responsibility. Also, uh, with this so-called new movement of you know we're we're being told so many times that we're in this in this movement of, of, uh, of consciousness awakening. And, uh, but with that to me comes always that great responsibility of, of being aware of what we wish for. Because, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Because, because, you know, I mean, every, I can say, I want this, and this is going to be such a beautiful world. And the next moment I can completely undo that with the next thought that might be based on doubts or something that just happened to me. I might just wake up and be in a bad mood and all of a sudden everything I created so beautifully, you know, yeah. the day before might be undone and then I have to do it again. It's kind of like pushing up that, it's like, <laughs> it's like the work of Sisyphus, you know, we yeah. push up that rock and we're almost there and then <laughs> <laughs> again, so, yeah, again, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Well, and share a little bit more about that because um, you're speaking of cause and effect and in the eternal realm, uh, we have plenty of space. So the perception of, you know, a moment, uh, even for myself, I'm like, okay, let's do an evaluation. Like if I knew that all this was coming, like where did I succeed in my practices and where did I like get led astray? Because um, yeah. I think that's really juicy information for our eternal path. Like, so if, if or when we meet the, something again or continued, we can meet it better, so to speak. But you're speaking of cause and effect, and so the sum accumulation of you know our actions have led us to this moment. And then I find it curious we're all being like your painting directed to the light, like it's like that's enough of that. Um, get back focusing and creating and paving that way. Um, can you share like the comparison, the, the contrast to what you were experiencing in, in the brouhaha, uh, in the light, the magic of the light where you've experienced those moments where to me, I call it like being a little kid on Christmas where it's like, Whoa, <laughs> that just happened. It's, it's miraculous. Those moments. Can you share a little bit more about that potential that, um, comes through when we are in that resonance? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there, there is, uh, there is that moment where, where we feel that, um, that, you know, everything, you know, has to be redone. We have to restructure and, uh, and, and it's going to be a lot of effort and, and, 
it's easy to to lose sight of of the bigger picture because you know even those moments are always also moments of of deep learning you know the the situations and the people who give us the most pain are also our greatest teachers mm. and uh, so um so if we bear in mind that this is so then then uh we can we can easier go through these these times of um of challenge and uh, and and rest assured at least i trust that that this is so and uh, i base my life on this that there is light and there is there is always um a next level something that is is more beautiful and more evolved and but that also involves setbacks you know i'm not saying that we're just going to go straight into this into this um paradisical existence right it's all it's always a lot of life being on this planet and being in this body is a lot of work and and whether we like it or not we just have to deal with with pain and 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 uh yeah and and adverse um moments and realities and uh and that's good that's okay i mean i don't know if it's good but it, it doesn't feel good but it <laughs> it's okay and i guess that's what what i mean the, the that's what the medicines always teach too that it's all right you know yeah well it's child, okay it, childbirth it doesn't do that you know it's like yeah. you go through extreme pain but you can find the beauty and the nirvana in it actually um you know yes. yeah okay so exactly. all right pascal's calling here if i can get it up your painting this okay is him, yes right? yes Okay. Yeah. So yeah. This, yeah, so this is a, a portrait of my partner Pascal, yeah. who is also is a, a wonderful painter. He's also and he is I call this light warrior, and he is mm -hmm. he is a light warrior in mm -hmm. his work. His work is much more mineral than mine, and but his uh, and his uh, his landscapes are very otherworldly and um, based in in this. Um, in ancient civilizations and the the wisdom and the mysteries that uh, the the ancestors have 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 uh, have uh, carried for us and that we are that we can those those spaces that we can connect with and uh, and uh, kind of like he's he's sort of an, somebody who works with sort of like ancient future ideas mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so this is him as a um, as a druid, as a, I always see him like that. And he used to have a, um, a raven when he was a boy, he found a raven who followed him everywhere. And, mm. <laughs> and, uh, so, so he's kind of, you know, he's, he's, he's got, he's got, he's got a little Merlin in him. And, and so I, and he's, he's one of the, the, the very, um, he incorporates this very rare combination of, um, of carrying a lot of uh, feminine softness and mm -hmm. and sensitivity in a, in a male body, in a very definitely very male body. So it's and I'm I'm happy to to share this moment in time with him. So yeah, beautiful. So this, this is my honoring of him and who he is. And yeah, yeah. and I I love um, how did you word it? Ancient future. Ancient future. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So share, this? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, share more about that because you you both um, have this element of uh, per, perceiving and interacting with dimensions that aren't uh, visible to all mm -hmm. people. Um, yeah. And share a little bit because I, you know, the the raven is a messenger. It's the bridge between uh, worlds. And uh, share more about that ancient future. Yeah, well, I I feel that um, if we if we look through time, I can't I can't help but wonder what what was there bef before um, before history or what we know about history and and I I always think about those those people who um, who had incredible tools and knowledge and how much of that is really lost in 
do we have still access to it and can we reconnect with it and and can we just uh, connect with it in a way of um, of receiving the energy uh, in a different way than by uh, by a teacher because if if we think about maybe Atlantean times and and which is so so far removed and we can only imagine and dream about what these mm. people might have known and the technology they might have had or the ancient Egyptians and we will never really know or is it just a, a projection but I don't think so so I'm yeah. I'm always trying to in my work and Pascal is doing the same thing I know um, we we try to build these bridges to to those times where the the ancient um, the ancient cosmologies are definitely connected to the, the new cosmologies and the future. And we are building something that is uh, that is unique and that might resemble at some point um, to what they say those ancient civilizations mm -hmm. had um, available to them, um, like time travel or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, alternative energy and uh, um, mind connection and uh, miraculous healings. Yeah, I mean everything is just uh, so. Sometimes I feel it's so it's so present. It's so it's so close. Yeah, and well, it's just another it's, step. Yeah, yeah. We definitely in working with a lot of traditional elders, I've experienced things within our practices and um, skill set that those things are all available here. Um, but it, again, like, you know, anything you accrue that through lifetimes, not necessarily even in one lifetime. Uh, and that's the interesting yeah. thing, even for the, the generations, I would say in their twenties, teen, late teens, that they're really like, Whoa, I can astral travel. And I'm like, Whoa, you got to slow down. <laughs> you could get in some hot water, <laughs> you know, but the, there is a yearning for consciousness to understand those. So it's beautiful that you both are painting sure. in a way to open up um, the memories for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some I, of it, yeah. would you say is hiding in plain sight? Cause I remember uh, being at the Acropolis and I was like fresh out of architecture and design school. And here I'd learned like, and been building in school. And then I'm standing at this mammoth, temple going there's a human didn't do this and I had no idea about like anything uh sci-fi well maybe a little but not I just my gut was like this there's no way that someone made that flute perfectly mm -hmm. symmetrical from here to there um over many lifetimes <laughs> I was it just as my intuition so I feel like a lot's hiding in plain sight um and it's just a matter of we're willing to get out of our mind um yeah. Have you I had agree. Those, I agree. those experiences, even from painting and traveling and so forth? Well, um, well, I, I've had, I've, I've had wonderful experiences with, um, uh, with my own personal healing sessions that I like to do, where I just uh, connect with uh, certain entities or, like, uh, you know, the the nature and and ascended masters just to just just i call in a lot of help and my guardians and my 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 angels and and i sometimes i just ask to be um to be helped and supported in certain in certain situations and what i always find amazing is this energy that that can arrive or mm -hmm. a pain can can be undone like in five minutes, you know, and you go, wow, you know, was that them or was it me or was it just, did I just remove some, some blocks, some, mm. some disbelief that this is happening, that, that, that I could be moving the energy in such a way where I can heal myself on the spot. And so, so all of that, you know, is, is really, um, is really exciting to me. And, uh, and that's, uh, well, if we could just, that, that goes back to creating our reality each moment. I mean, we yeah. have that choice, I feel, but it's not easy to, to do. I mean, how, who can be 
a hundred percent aware and and conscientious and connected yeah. to that to that higher self of ours any time and to the to the larger picture. Yeah, well, and yeah. willing, you know, uh, you're really, reminding, yeah. reminding me of certain moments in my life where I was definitely guided by the divine to like hold an attention and that something uh -huh. was possible and. I, I yeah. knew that it was, but as soon as I let the, that fear in or doubt, it just like yeah. all gave way, you know? And that's yes. what this moment on planet Earth, Earth has been about, is um, being in a dance with our own fears, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's then what, what do we do if we break past that, you know? So <laughs> yeah, there's it's lots of lots of possibilities. Um, I want to share, let's see, I saw this, we have, I think I have, no, I have this. Let's see. It's gonna, I'm gonna try to get to one picture there. This, oh, yes. I'm gonna show it also um, in a gallery setting. I happened just to find this this morning. Isn't that the same one right there? Uh, no, it's not the same one, but it's definitely in a similar feeling okay. it i i cre at some point i created this uh, this whole series of uh of uh um vessels that yeah. are that are not made of metal they're not they're not technology in the sense that we understand technology but they're they're alive and they're organic and that's how i i i sense that alien life or certain alien life may be yeah so well, and, and then where's the yeah. installation? Because it complements it so oh, well with the sculpture. Yeah, this is yeah, this is at at the Naya Museum in France, uh, mm -hmm. here in Brittany, and uh, and it's a it's one of the great museums of imaginary art mm -hmm. um, on the planet, and uh, definitely the the uh, a one of a kind in Europe, and I. I'm not aware of anything like this even in the United States, and it's a it's a museum that is opened all year, and uh, it hosts about eighty um, international artists. Wow! And uh, and it's sculpture, it's uh, painting, it's uh, uh, digital art, it's uh, um, it's drawings and uh, installations, and it's just really a magical place. Uh, located in a castle oh, wow. uh, so the the surroundings are just amazing it's in a yeah. big on big castle grounds and and we've been pascal and i have been very honored to be part of this uh, wonderful project since 2015 when it came into being oh, and wow. the piece you see up there my painting is that's a triptych and it's called the landing and uh and this piece was uh, painted for my um, for my exhibition in 2018. I had a six month exhibition together with Robert's work at the uh, Giga Museum, mm. H.R. Giga Museum in Switzerland in Gruyere. And this is where um, I showed this for the first time. And uh, and uh, since uh, last year, it's found a uh, a semi permanent home in the at the Naya Museum, and uh, so the museum changes a little bit each season, each year has a little bit of a different look, and some mm. some artworks are exchanged, and it's just really a, an amazing project. And the angel you showed before this other piece, the very long yeah, um, piece, that. yeah, this one, it, I call this Michael, and um, these. I usually don't paint angels, but uh, in two in two two thousand and twenty, uh, after COVID had 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 settled in, um, these these beings came into into existence on my they they appeared on my canvases and uh, and uh, and I felt I mean I didn't say I would paint Archangel Michael, but I felt that it was him. And uh, I had done a previous painting too that is called the blessing, which mm -hmm. you might you might have right there on your radar. And that's I feel that's him as well. It's a Michael is considered one of it's he's considered the highest or the closest to to the to the source mm. and the 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 closest to to um, 
yeah to god or the source whatever you yeah, yeah. Uh, and um uh, uh don't want to bring any religious connotations <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i really felt that this 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 wonderful guardian was was present for all of us and uh, mm. and it's, uh, you see you see him right there in the center it's, he's very you know you see him small but his wings and his majesty and his his power are just really yeah, tremendous it rem- very yeah, oceanic it, like it reminds me of a man ray like you know yeah yeah um, is that right? and michael is, yeah yeah exactly yeah and michael is always considered the um the the angel of protection so mm. god we can call on michael when yeah. when we need when we need protection and support yeah yeah beautiful and you know during this period of time on planet earth um there's been this like great battle with ideology and um Mm uh people like i don't know i would call it shaming people for their beliefs or this or that Um, oh yeah if you can share a little bit just to assist people because that can sometimes be disorienting if they're saying oh now this is bad. That was, you thought it was good, but it's bad. And um, share a little mm-hmm. bit about your personal relationship and just even, you know, when we feel the um, energies of, you know, let's say Archangel Michael, like how you mm-hmm. can discern uh, where an energy is for the benefit and where one is subtracting. Yeah. Well, just, just really briefly. I mean, I, I could just talk briefly too about my, my background. I mean, I was, I was raised uh, uh, my my family was uh, was Protestant, um, and and interestingly enough, my my dad left the church when he was twenty one because he didn't condone the, the 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 disasters and massacres that the the, the church had produced. Mm-hmm. Um, that didn't mean that he didn't have any kind of a personal faith, but he based it more in in nature and uh but uh but also in in a higher in a higher uh um element and um my his grandmother was she was she was a plant woman she was definitely she would read the cards and she was psychic and she would she was a healer and so there was that too and he got initiated by her i mean he he was because his mother died and usually you know those those gifts are usually given from woman to woman. And mm. so interestingly enough, um, she taught him the ways of, of working with plants. So I grew up with, with, with nice herbal medicines and teas. I mean, I can't remember eating, taking much medicine in my, in my childhood. So, so basically, and my, my grandfather, my mother's father was an atheist and my grandmother would go to ch- his wife would go to church but she wouldn't be like a she wouldn't be doing that any any day but every day but she would she would find <laughs> great joy in in singing and mm-hmm. in connecting so there was this vast range of of what what it meant to connect yourself to spirit that was not limited in any way so i grew up with a very open uh, open minded people and so when I grew up, I actually begged my, my father to let me do confirmation. He says, don't waste your time with that. You know, it's just, just going to do like a year and a half and with this, with this silliness. And you go, you're going to find that you're going to be disappointed. I said, well, I have to find out for myself. So, but in any event, I would always look for these experiences. And I wanted to find out what are these religions about and how do how does that person celebrate so all my life i've really enjoyed ceremony whatever yeah. uh, religion it was based in because i what i was connecting with was the authenticity of the spirit connection and you can find that in anything i mean you could be like a glass of water and you know if that gets your rocks off then you know <laughs> That's fine, and uh, so so really for me to be sensing 
uh, spirit guides and angels or saying, I like to, you know, I, I pray for you. I, I often get this reaction from people who say, yeah, but you know, I don't, I don't believe in prayer, but it's like, because it's like a structured and a submissive thing and we should be more, it's, it should be more cosmic. And, and I'm going, well, you know, it's just a word, you know, God is just a word. It doesn't mean it can, you can't even begin to describe what this is about. So, yeah. so I, I'm just all about connecting with this mysterious, incredible energy that is is uh, is always present and uh, at least present for me. You know, I mean, an atheist will say, I, I don't think that there's anything present. So, yeah. you know, that's what what uh, what a person likes to um, choose this as their reality, then even that is something that I, I'm not going to criticize it and I'm not going to condone it. So, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I just, um, I just think that knowing, knowing, finding your own connection to anything is really, is really the key. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think what you're talking about is the interface. I call it, we're very similar because uh, I've explored all things. Um, mm -hmm. And I consider myself a meritage of the things that I, practices I engage with. So I can't give it up to one word. Um, I've experienced miracles in all faiths. Um, yes. All, all faiths, you know, and in yes. nature. And so I just call it the unseen. Um, what I've noticed is if you ask okay it'll engage with you. Like the divine will engage with you. It doesn't, of course. it doesn't interfere. The dark forces will interfere because they play on weakness, you know, and that's, it's sure. pretty much that simple. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's like that's something's messing with you, you know, that maybe you need to get yourself straight or, you know, go take a pause and then yeah. come back and yeah. <laughs> Simplicity. Well, I think I think that's a that's a wonderful way to um, to help anybody who's 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 looking for that connection. Yeah. You know, we always. I mean, the everything begins with a question or, uh, a, a, yeah, and 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 asking to be helped. You know, we have to make that first step. I mean, things will happen afterwards, but but we have to express an interest. There has to be an interest, yeah. an honest interest. An authentic deep interest and then everything else is just uh, automatic and it comes yeah absolutely um yeah and when the aspect of laying prayers i'm thinking of pascal being the uh intermediary between here and the heavens above but um can you share your relationship from like an earth you know being your history with your aunt and your you know your family and your mom and your dad about the interaction with the earth realm because many indigenous cultures that's the prayers are laid with materials of the earth back to the earth um can you and being that you paint you're using materials different ways that are produced from potentially earth uh elements right so can you share a little bit more about that active action of prayer versus just silent prayer or you can use a different oh. word Oh, oh, I see. So, so are you are you referring? I'm trying to get the question right. So, yeah, um, we'll share a little bit more about like, and you have this painting. I'll see if I can get it over there. Yes. <laughs> the it's the Buddha. So in there. Oh yes. Um, in like the Tonka paintings, they'll pray when they paint. But if mm -hmm. you can just share a little bit about prayer and action. Um, mm. versus just in repose. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, so this is a, a commission piece I did for somebody, and he was very specific what he wanted. He wanted a, um, yeah, a, a snake and the Buddha, and he wanted the, the, the beautiful little sacred cow and everything, and, uh, and this, this energy of, of enlightenment. And, uh, and when, um, yeah, I feel that, um, I mean, the deepest prayer happens when, when, when there's a, when the, when the, the, the call goes beyond just a demand. It can't just be a demand. It has to be something that, that comes from a, from a deep place of, 
of um, of honesty. And when the miracles that I felt in my life came when I when I when I when I engaged with this 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 honesty, it can't just be oh well you know just give me this or give me that. It has to be very very grounded in. It can't it can't be it it needs to be a a call when when it's really when it's really necessary so so the active part i mean painting is also kind of like a prayer to me every every time i sit it's it's meditation and prayer all rolled into one because there's this it it feels similar sometimes i even i think about the people in my life or i think about the people who 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 have have crossed my path and I think about certain situations or that you know it, it comes and goes and and uh, and sometimes you know painting a beautiful bee or a beautiful you know part of a flower is 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 a is a is a devotional um, uh, move that that it's my it's my offering if you want you know it is my prayer it is my offering it's my it's I, I want to create something that that is is right and beautiful and that resonates and hopefully gives somebody an experience when they look at it where they say yeah. mm, that's really that really speaks to me it doesn't have to be saying it doesn't have to affect them necessarily um I don't expect them to say, oh, that's amazing or that's beautiful, but I want I want people to have an experience, a, a, a feeling of feeling of being connected to something. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, yeah. yeah. It continues to have imprints because we're electromagnetic fields. You know, yeah, yeah. Every person that exactly. stands in front of your paintings leaves something there, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and exactly. receives something there. So, okay, I've like exceeded my time limit with you, but I appreciate, and I know it's Friday night for you guys, so yeah. you might be winding down or uh, ready to enjoy, but I so appreciate you being here. Um, we'll put the links below. What do you have up and coming? Are you planning on um, getting out in the world, speaking of getting back out in the world? Yeah, I, I, I definitely, I mean, definitely, if you, if anybody comes to France, I want to say, come and see the Naya Museum. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the um, upcoming ex um, exhibitions just around the corner are, uh, for example, a show in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. There's the Phil Lewis Gallery, and they are gathering, uh, he, Phil is gathering the, um, the Boulder Visionary Tribe. Um, after the a long pause and uh, so this is going to be quite lovely and there's going to be a few people that some of the the, the visionary uh, community might recognize as Andrew Jones and Chris, Chris Dyer and Christy and Della and uh, there's also Randall Roberts and uh, and Morgan Mandela and Pascal and myself and amongst some other people so this is one of the wonderful uh, local events in Colorado, stateside that are happening. And then there's also an event, a beautiful exhibition that is coming up at the Wollongong Art Gallery in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, Boundary Slide, Strider, and five artists are going to be exhibiting there, myself included. Beautiful. So, um, so that's, uh, that's just, just coming up. Um, there haven't been too many exhibitions because of all the restrictions and and i think a lot of the organizers are still treading lightly yeah. they don't want to you know get too involved and so, yeah, <laughs> yeah so these are these are two exhibitions that are coming up for me and uh, and then i'm also working on a um, a tarot deck with uh, mm -hmm. Lika Wong and there's uh, seven seven artists involved, sev seven mm -hmm. of us, so Liba and Carrie and Bard and myself and and uh, and, a, and a flu of other people. So that's well, I think we're we're going to be looking at at the end of this year, and there's going to be exhibitions uh, showing the artwork because they're they're good sized canvases that we've painted to to oh, wow. create so so it's going to be it's an exciting oh, project that's it's, fun. It's been happening for a long time and 
So that's, yeah. How that's, many are, are you keeping it to the traditional deck size? Like how many paintings are you guys each painting each? Yeah, it's going to be the traditional deck size. And Liba has been really uh, developing a very interesting system that I'm not going to give away. Okay. And I, it's so, so she's going to, we'll, nice. we'll have events. We'll, we'll definitely have exhibitions. I think the opening exhibition is, is definitely going to be in Paris where she lives. And okay. And then the the Ooh, show was will cool. most likely be traveling. So and she, she I'm sure she will uh, offer the um, some introductions and some some yeah public events, some online events for this. Okay, so those are all exciting. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll circle around with that too later when that yeah. comes. That's exciting. It feels good energetically. So mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful. Well, I appreciate you being here today and sharing your wisdom and grace and i'm glad that you pushed on through to the other side back into the light as many of us yes. have yeah hooray <laughs> hooray <laughs> and i hope yeah, yeah. So, yes definitely thank yeah thank you so much for this opportunity and it's always such a pleasure to see you and to to share with you yeah thank you